The news of the conquest of Jerusalem by the Muslims hit Europe like a bombshell, and Pope Gregorius VIII, who had just become the new pope, issued a proclamation declaring that the loss of Jerusalem by the Christians was God's punishment for the sins of the Christians living in Europe. All over Western Europe, it was decided that a new crusade would be launched to recapture the holy cities for the Christians. The King of England, the King of France and the King of Germany agreed to this third crusade and started preparations immediately. In fact, in order to prevent war expenses, they decided to enact a tax law called Dima Saladina, that is to say, Saladin's tax, and to excommunicate those who did not pay this tax. Thus, among the crusading armies prepared, the Germans set off by land, while the French and English set off by sea. The army under the command of German Emperor Friedrich Barbarossa was one of the largest and best equipped armies in the history of the Crusades. The Anatolian Seljuk Sultan Kılıçar II was quite old. He divided his country among his 11 sons. Each son was to be a bay under him. However, even before Kılıçar son passed away, his sons had already started to quarrel and even wage war with each other. Two lions do not fit in one post. The German Crusader army led by Emperor Friedrich Barbarossa was the largest Crusader army assembled during the Crusades and was well armed and well disciplined. The army marched through Hungary, through the Eastern Roman held Balkans, towards Constantinople. This army was joined by Geza, the brother of the Hungarian King Bela III. After the great defeat at the Battle of Mio Kefalon in 1176, Eastern Rome stabilized the situation in Anatolia only in 1185 and signed a treaty of peace and alliance with the Anatolian Seljuk Sultan, Kılıçar II. The Greeks were also unhappy with the presence of the great German Crusader army in Eastern Roman territory, but there was no way for Eastern Rome to resist the size of the German Crusader army. The German Crusader army began a reorganized and gradual passage through Eastern Roman territory. Again, the Crusader army showed examples of indiscipline and Friedrich Barbarossa's army occupied the city of Plovdiv. They also burned Adrianople. Therefore, in the fall of 1189, this army was moved to Anatolia through the Dardanelles to prevent it from coming to Constantinople. Kalitschar son II, on the other hand, avoided confrontation with this large German army and made a treaty with the Germans to ensure its passage through Anatolia without being subjected to Seljuk offensives. However, his sons and Turkmens were not satisfied with the situation. Since he had already divided his country among his 11 sons, Kalitschar son II seemed to have no de facto power. The Turks ambushed the German Crusader army advancing in Anatolia inflicting serious casualties on the Germans. According to the agreement between Kılıçar II and Friedrich Barbarossa, the Crusaders were to pass near the city of Konya and advance into Saladin's country. When they arrived in Konya, Kutbettin Melikshah could not bear this situation and had his father, Kılıçar II, arrested and took over the administration. He gathered his army and confronted the Crusaders, but he was defeated by the Crusaders. Konya was then besieged and captured by them. The capital was pillaged and plundered. The German Crusader army stayed in Konya for five days and started marching again. It was planned to follow the Goxi river valley and descend to the Mediterranean. However, when the German Crusader army came out of the mountainous terrain on June the 10th, 1190 and reached the vicinity of Selivka, Emperor Friedrich Barbarossa I, who was a little ahead of his army and bodyguards, drowned in the Göxe river where he went to bathe. His son Friedrich VI, Duke of Swabia, took command of the German Crusader army. Meanwhile, Turkmen attacks continued. Some commanders and soldiers, tired of the stubbornness of the Turks and emboldened by the death of their emperor, deserted the army. Saladin Ayyubi, who had heard about the Crusader attacks, had set up his defense line against the Crusaders coming from Anatolia and prepared to meet the Crusaders here. 
Meanwhile, the king of Jerusalem had broken his oath and besieged the Muslim-held city of Acre. With the men he gathered from the Christians settled in the city of Tyre from Jerusalem. Saladin initially did not care about the siege of Acre because he was waiting for the German crusaders coming from Anatolia. However, the German crusaders who had entered Anatolia with a large army were able to leave Anatolia with very few people. Most of them had returned or been killed by Turkish attacks and the death of the emperor. When Saladin learned that the number of German crusaders arriving was very small, he immediately turned his attention to the city of Acre. But it was too late. The French crusader armies had arrived in Acre with their ships and supported the king of Jerusalem. Hundreds more ships were on their way. Some ships of the English crusader army were caught in a storm and washed ashore off the coast of Cyprus. Among the beached ships were the sister and fiancée of the English King Richard, the Lionheart. The ship carrying the funds he had collected to finance the crusade was also washed ashore. It was learned that the ship carrying this treasure and Richard's sister and fiancée were captured by Isakos Komnenos, who ruled in Cyprus. Richard landed in Cyprus on May the 6th to take them back, and he invaded and captured Cyprus with his army. Isakos was captured at Cape of Victory on the Carpus Peninsula, the northernmost tip of the island. Richard then gathered his armies and set off for the city of Acre. The fortress of Acre was on a promontory with the harbor to the south, the sea to the west and very strong city walls connected vertically by the north and east. The walls were defended by the Muslim armies in the city. The besieging crusaders were in front of the walls in the shape of a half moon. Saladin had sent an army to liberate the city from the siege. Saladin's army was unable to defeat the besieging Christian army despite clashes with the crusaders. The Christian crusader army was constantly supported by Christian crusaders who had recently arrived on the coast and in the ports near the city. So, there was no way to break their siege. In the winter of 1190-1191, many disease outbreaks broke out in the camp of the Christian besiegers. The siege was therefore considerably prolonged. On June the 8th, 1191, Richard the Lionheart arrived in front of Acre with his army from Cyprus. He brought many soldiers and large siege catapults. Immediately, catapults and other large siege engines were rebuilt to storm the fortress. The Muslims defending the city had no outside support and starvation was rampant. Only a few swimmers were able to establish contact with the city. In the summer of 1191, the support that the Muslim defenders of the city had asked for from Saladin was not forthcoming in the face of the size of the besieging Christian armies. On July the 11th, 1191, after a two-year siege, the defenders of the fortress of Acre placed Christian crusader flags on the walls and announced their surrender. The crusaders then entered the city and plundered it. They captured 2,700 Muslim soldiers and more than 300 Muslim women and children. King Richard, the commander of the crusaders, was unwilling to release the prisoners without a high ransom. Saladin also had Christian prisoners in his hands. If Muslims were touched, the heads of Christians would be taken in return. For King Richard, however, the Christians to be killed were of no value. Revealing his ruthless nature, he had 2,700 Muslim soldiers and about 300 women and children tied together with ropes brought to the castle gate, where Saladin and his army could see them from a distance. He led them at the mercy of the Christian Crusader Knights, who swarmed on the Muslim prisoners and murdered them all, leaving no one alive.
seeing this, Saladin and his army were very upset and responded by killing the captured Christians. The son of the German Emperor, Friedrich, was killed in the siege of Acre. Philip, the King of France, was gravely ill, so he left his men to King Richard and returned home. Thus, the Crusader armies were gathered under one banner, under the command of King Richard. After capturing Acre, Richard marched south along the seacoast to Jaffa. After taking this fortress, he planned to make an offensive into Palestine towards Jerusalem. But while he was marching on the coast with his crusader army, Saladin was following this crusader army in parallel from the coast. Richard's crusader naval fleet followed the crusaders from the sea. During their march on September the 7th, Richard had expected a serious attack from Saladin and had organized his army accordingly. Richard organized the army so that it faced the land and its back was to the sea and in this way, the army moved to his right. When they reached Asuf, 50 kilometers north of Jaffa, Saladin suddenly turned his army towards the coast and went into battle against the Crusader army. Saladin took a command position behind the main formation and ascended the hill in the Asuf first. The center was under the command of Aftal, the right flank under Adil, and the left flank under Alaeddin bin Izzeddin of Mosul. The infantry units were in the front ranks while the cavalry was deployed in the rear. On September the 7th, 1191, the two armies fought the Battle of Asuf at this location. Saladin had planned to slow down the advance of the vanguard of Duman by showering the rear troops with arrows. Thus, prolonging the march and, if possible, opening a breach in the enemy lines to allow for a good offensive. The early stages of the offensive were characterized by intense arrow fire, which forced the infantry on the crusader left flank to march backwards, weakening the link between the left flank and the center, just as Saladin had planned. Saladin's right flank wore down Richard's left flank while no contact was made on the other flank. The casualties were not high, but the number of mounted knights was dwelling by the minute as the Turkish horse archers deliberately targeted the horses. At this stage, the Muslim infantry had retreated to the flanks to allow the cavalry to pass. An all-out attack was launched on the crusader left flank, including the heavy Mamluk cavalry. This left the left flank completely immobilized and the situation became dangerous for the crusaders. As soon as the crusader left flank was cut off from the center, it was only a matter of time before the cavalry on Saladin's left flank would rush into the gap and devastate the crusaders. The Muslims thought they would capture them. It was then that the cavalry on the crusader right relied together and decided to attack, for they feared for their men and were convinced that only an attack could save them. The crusader right column attacked in unison along the line. This attack overwhelmed the infantry of the Muslim left column and quickly collapsed it. The Muslim troops began to scatter and flee, almost on the verge of defeat. The right flank, seeing the center retreating, also began to flee. The Crusader infantry from the rear continued to advance, murdering wounded Muslim soldiers in the process. It is said that many civilians were slaughtered by the crusaders in the bazaar that had been set up near the camp to meet the needs of the Muslim army. Although the Muslim army retreated towards the tree-covered hills, Saladin did not leave the hill where he was standing, but instead kept his bannermen and drummers there, creating a relying point. Ibn al-Asir narrates, had the Franks realized that this was a genuine retreat, they would have continued the chase and more Muslims would have been slaughtered. But there was a dense forest nearby and they entered it. 
The Franks, sensing that this was a trick of warfare, turned back and the calamity that had befallen the Muslims came to an end. The battle ended in defeat for the Muslims. But there is no clear data on casualties. Muslim sources believe that both sides lost many men. The Crusaders were victorious, but it was never a decisive victory. Saladin managed to regroup his army. The Crusaders had lost many horses, which meant that their cavalry force was even smaller. Replacing them was not an easy task. The Battle of Asuf was an important battle. Saladin lost the lands on the coast of Palestine. It was a testament to Richard's command and to the fact that the Crusaders were not a disorganized mob, but a brave and disciplined army that listened to commands. In contrast, this battle was a black mark on Saladin's reputation as a commander. Richard then marched with his army along the coast to Jaffa and captured the fortress. Saladin had lost all of his land on the coast of Palestine and its return to the Crusaders posed a more serious threat to Jerusalem. 